Well, clearly, um, good morning, by the way, Annalise. Thank you. Um, clearly, there's been developments between Russia, Turkey and Iran in recent weeks. Um, last week's summit in Tehran obviously failed to deliver an outcome. Um, there's now been this follow-up meeting in Sochi between um, Erdogan and Putin. They've agreed this buffer zone, um, but the devil is really in the detail and it's still unclear exactly what the buffer zone means and how it's going to be enforced and what are the consequences when it's not being enforced properly. Um, the key thing is to remember there's already been a pre previous agreement on Idlib. Idlib is one of the de-escalation de zones agreed by Russia. Um, and in fact, Russia was meant to police that de-escalation zone in Idlib and also elsewhere in Syria, in Aleppo, in East Nehruta. And Russia, along with the Syrian regime and Iranian forces on the ground, have been the main perpetrators of breaking that previous de-escalation zone in Idlib. So if I was one of the one of the three million Syrian civilians living in Idlib, I won't have much confidence in this new buffer zone where it has Russia, one of the main protagonists of the conflict, enforcing it. Um, so as I say, the devil's still very much in the detail. Um, yes, there might have been a slight pause or stoppage of a large-scale attack against Idlib, um, but th what does that mean further down the line? Um, I would be surprised um, to see what the reaction of the Syrian government and the Iranians will be to the buffer zone. It's very clear they're not part of this um, MOU sign between Russia and Turkey. As I say, in the past, the Russians have struggled to keep keep in line their clients, the, the, the Syrian regime and, and, and the Iranians. Uh, and What's also very interesting was from the messaging that came out from Turkey and Erdogan afterwards that he made very clear that for the Turks, the buffer zone is about switching focus to dealing with um, Kurdish forces within the, 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 the Syrian Democratic Forces uh, in northeast of Syria. So clearly there are different objectives at play. And it seems, as always from, from the start of this conflict in, in, in Syria the last seven years, Syrian civilians are always the last to be on that agenda. Um, so for me, you know, the, as I say, the devil's still very much in the detail. Um, will will this buffer zone be the answer to, to the Syrian crisis? I'm very skeptical. Um, what it instead needs is a comprehensive approach that actually provides protection um, for the civilians in Idlib and, and across Syria. Um, and that's, that's been the key missing link. Um, so it will, it will be interesting to see how, how this does develop. Um, you know, the messaging so far from the international community has been one of, well, very clear that the red lines have been drawn again on use of chemical weapons. And there's been a, a rise, rise in activity of U.S. diplomacy in recent weeks, um, getting behind the political process led by the U.N. in Geneva. That's all good, and that shows actually where there is political will, there are practical policy options that can develop. But obviously, from with, that. without cooperation from Iran and the Syrian regime, this won't work. Thank you very much, Mr. Abdi.